Hi, I'm Dave Tweet. I work with the Montana Wheat and Barley Committee, and today we wanted to talk to you about malting barley. Montana produces some of the finest quality malting barley in the world, and it all starts with research. Um, research can be either private or public. These are happen to be test plots from Montana State University showing the research plots. It takes about eight years, eight to 10 years, for a variety, either wheat or barley, to become viable and get into com commercial production. Um, after the barley research is done and we have a viable barley variety, it has to work for the farmer, it has to work for the maltster, it has to work for the brewer. The farmer wants good yield, drought resistance, low protein, straw strength, disease resistance, uh, good agronomic characteristics. The maltster wants good enzyme activity, low beta glucans, so that it'll break down and soak up water quickly. And the, the, malt, the brewer then wants good flavor profile and good alcohol conversion, good sugar conversion to make into alcohol during the brewing process. So this would be a barley plant that the farmer would grow in his field. This is two row barley, which is primarily what we grow in Montana. It has higher extract and just seems to produce better than any six row varieties. So after the farmer grows it, he will store it in his bin at about 11% moisture. The uh, lower the moisture, the better it stores. And some of our farmers store and then d deliver year around. So he would come to the elevator or the malt plant in a truck like this, where the grain then would be probed and inspected and graded to make sure it meets the malting barley specifications. Then the first step in the malting process is remember that barley was 11% moisture. We have to make that barley kernel grow. That's the whole thing about a malting process is to turn that starch in the kernel, which is about 88%, into a simple sugar. So this is the steep tank. We bring in the 11% moisture barley, put it in the steep tank, put water on it and bubble air through it so it doesn't drown. We raise that moisture to about 44%. And this takes about two days. They flush this a couple of times to get rid of any surface contaminants or whatever. But um, about two days in here raises it from 11 moisture to 44% moisture. After that point, we bring it over to the germination tank vessel, uh, compartment, whatever you'd like to call it. What we're trying to do here is continue the germination process. A germination compartment can be rectangular, it can be round, it can be whatever. Essentially, it's, it, it's a compartment with a slotted floor where humid air can be blown in the bottom and that can be controlled for humidity and temperature to try to control the growth of the barley kernels. It's in here for about three days. And during that process, we have to move the kernels from the bottom up to the top. And let's see, here we go. No, this way, there we go. During that process, we have to move the kernels from the bottom up to the top. We're trying to maintain uniformity throughout this whole process. The goal is to have every one of these kernels converting that starch to a sugar at the same rate at the same time. This also, by having those augers or helixes go through the grain occasionally, it keeps them growing together, and it, which would be quite a mess after about three days. So after about three days, I, when the acrospire or sprout is just starting to emerge, uh, that is a visual indicator that that starch in that kernel is starting to convert to a simple sugar. So it's about where we want it. So at that point, the maltster then transfers it to another compartment. Again, a slotted floor where air can be blown in. And this would be a kiln. So we're taking that 44% moisture barley and we're blowing hot air through about 120 degrees to begin with. And then they raise it up towards the end of the process. 
and they blow that air in here and the idea is to dry this down to about 4% moisture and that stops the growth, essentially kills uh, the growth in the kernel. At that point, we have the malt, it is done, it is ready to be, it's, it's really malt barley at this point, but it's dirty as you can see. It still has rootlets on it, it has chaff, it has um, excess material. So that is then cleaned and separated. So the cleanings then are, they come out and they are a good product, a high protein product, very, very good feed source. So that material is sent off into the feed channels and we are left with malting barley. Malting barley um, should be nutty, tasting, sweet, almost like a grape nuts flavor to me anyway. And this then goes to every brewery that makes beer, be it a large user or a craft brewer. And at the end of the day, we hope they come up with something like this.